Hey, it's Dr. Linda Davis, and I wanted to run through with you this Locati Dream Designers PowerPoint. I'm not going to show you every single skill because obviously you should come into this class with CIS 101 level skills, but I'll hit the high points of the new stuff you should learn and be aware of. And I do have individual videos on stacking images and alternating that with text as well. So let me roll through this one and let's start on the first slide. This is how it should look, and there is the answer key is in Moodle for you to look at. I'm starting off with a, a gradient background and sometimes on your printout it may say a black background which is fun. I just like to give you practice with both. And when I click the mouse I have that first Lakati um, graphic. Their company logo comes in first. That's, that is set to the mouse click. I believe slide transition is set to um, Dis, um, dissolve, I believe. If not, just check your paper, it'll tell you. And your paper, your, your printout paper, looks a lot like your test paper, so just know I follow that same format. Um, the second thing is Lakati comes in. I typed that. That is a papyrus font and uh, in yellow. And that's one text box. And then Dream Designers is a separate text box. It's done in white, but also in papyrus is the font name. And Notice that there are two separate text boxes, and that's so I can push them together more if I need to. And uh, that so that Lakati graphic should be first, that should be second, that should Dream Designer should be third. Then we have, um, and only the first thing on any title slide is on the mouse click. Everything else on the title slide will be set to after previous for its start. Now the next thing um, is the picture should be after previous. Wipe from top is the animation for all your images. Your login stone specialist uh, comes in next after previous, of course, with its certain um, animation effect that's mentioned. And then presented by comes in last with your name on it. Okay, so let me go to the next slide. All right, notice what changes and what stays the same. If it comes from the first slide, like this title bar, Locati and Locati Dream Designers, that stayed, that did not move in it, when it went into the second slide. So that means you need to turn off the animation for these three items. If it's appeared on the previous slide, don't animate it again. That's a general rule in PowerPoint. Outline is new, so that animates. You can just look at your paper to see what the animation effect should be. And I believe that's Papyrus too, just a um, smaller size. And again, that's on your paper. Um, the images next, wipe from top, of course, is the animation for all your images. And then let me click through the bullet points. Now this is like a slide you would do in CIS 101. So I'm not, you know, spending any time on this. Uh, I do expect the bullets to come in one bullet per mouse click. We always do that. And we dim the bullets to a less bright color so it's not as, um, doesn't stand out as much as the main color here. So we have it, this one that comes in in yellow and dims to, or goldish color and kind of dims to um, brown, but just depends, you know, just make sure your dim color is lesser, uh, less contrast than your main color. Now, let's switch out to we knew, we'll, uh, one more bullet there, and then we'll go to the slide three. Notice the graphic and Lakati Dream Designers do not move because they came, they're on every, top of every slide. Our location is new, so that should animate. The map of the United uh, North America should animate. And then we click, and several things happen on this one. The bullet comes up. This is a single text box with a, that's a bullet. And then we have the map of Montana comes in. Uh, we have the arrow pointing to the star. And the single text box, Bozeman, Bozeman Montana, that's on the mouse click. But the uh, Montana map is set to uh, wipe from top after previous. And the arrow is wipe from, uh, wipe from left after previous. And then this last little Lakati small image, that's a wipe from top after previous as well. Just to, you know, pinpoints the Lakati headquarters. It's a real company. Now, um, I click, so this next bullet is set to mouse click, and it's a single separate bullet just because we got so much going on with this slide. So it comes in, and it's look, uh, on the internet, you know, where do you find it? This LakatiArchitects.com, so type that in. And this becomes a hyperlink. Notice the hand that comes up. If I clicked on that, that would um, go out to their website. Now, um, make sure you spell it right. And then, of course, to set the hyperlink, I have a video on how to do that. It's very simple. It's basically just right click, um, insert hyperlink, and then type in the uh, web address. 
moving through to the next slide, we have exteriors. I think this is a basic slide, something like you would do in CIS 101. So the subtitle comes up, which is exteriors, the picture that comes up for exteriors, and then click to make log come up. All, all your bullets are always on mouse click, and all your subtitles up here like exteriors are always after previous, and your pictures are always after previous, at least in my class. Um, so when I go, I click through, log is, after, is on click. I think I always use blind to horizontal for the animation for bullets. Uh, timber frame, uh, that's on click as well, of course. And it, there are, they are dimmed. And so I just click through that. Basic slide there, nothing fancy. Uh, great rooms. Now this one, you, you sh you're going to show me that you know how to stack using our stacking technique where we alternate text, which means bullet points, versus um, pictures that go with them. So watch this flow. I click to make the text box come up, which it comes up first. It's set to mouse click. And then the image that goes with it pops up after previous. Okay, again, wipe from top for the image. So that's a set. Think of it as a set. Uh, you got a text box, that's a bullet, and you got an image. I click again, the next set comes up. You've got a text box on mouse click, and you've got an image that layers on top of the other image a little bit bigger, and it's set to after previous. So they flow together very well. I click again, same thing's going to happen, same pattern. Smart people recognize patterns. So we have custom stonework on the click, and we have the um, last image layering over that that is set to after previous. All right, so that's your stacking technique. In fact, I have a separate video just on that one slide. If you want to take, obviously, you should go look at that and see the mechanics of how I did that. Um, this one, I think we it's the, it's the benefit of knowing how to use arrows effectively in a PowerPoint. And so that one, you know, the kitchens is the subtitle. Of course, it comes up. Um, after previous and the picture comes up, you know, after previous with their respective animation effects. So look at your paper for that. Um, vaulted ceilings, that's a bullet that comes in on click and then the arrow points to the vaulted ceiling. Um, and we set those arrows um, to um, wipe, like in this case, from left after previous. And then we have also set it to um, hide on next mouse click so that arrow does not hang around. So I click again, arrow disappears. The new bullet comes up on click, the new arrow comes up, and the old arrow disappears. And so same settings there, you know, uh, the arrow is wiped from left uh, after previous and set it to where it uh, hides on next mouse click. And then we'll click again, custom cabinetry comes up. Again, a new arrow pointing at the cabinetry. And so the uh, previous arrow disappears. And that's what we want. Otherwise, it looks too cluttered if you leave all those arrows up there. Details, 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 I know. Projected revenue. Uh, we have our revenue slide. I already built the revenue slide for you. I mean, the revenue, excuse me. I built the revenue graph for you. You do not have to build this graph. You just have to place it and resize it to fit on the slide. And then we go through the, and I, of course, have a video on this, uh, extra video on this, where you um, animate the graph slide. We start off with the uh, actual linear trend line itself, the line itself. That's on mouse click. The words linear trend line come up after previous. And it'll be the same one in your test. And then we target the year. So I'm going to have on click, I'm going to have an oval over the top of 2014 in this case. And that's going to be set on click, like I said. Now the arrow going up, this first arrow here, that arrow is set to after previous wipe from bottom. And then, which is the logical way it should move. And then we have wipe from right is the logical way this last arrow should move, okay? Until the beauty of linear regression, it strikes the trend line at which point that reveals your forecast. Um, so moving through for this one would be like 80 billion, I guess. So we end it with these, the uh, answer. We say, okay, in 2014, projected revenue is 80 billion. And that's, we have that little phrase on the mouse click, kind of like is your finale for the graph slide to let your audience know what the answer is. Now, the uh, video slide, um, there actually is a Lakati, you know, uh, video on YouTube. You can use that one for practice. That's fine. It's, it's a little on the boring side, but it'll work. Uh, this one, um, I need to reset the link, but just watch the video on how to put a uh, YouTube video into PowerPoint. And um, there's like three different ways. So if one way don't work, you try the other two ways. And I have videos on all that, of course. Now, this is the closing slide, the first closing slide. There will be two of them. One's animated and one's not, basically. So 
Um, closing, the the uh, closing slide, everything's set to after previous for its start, so there's no mouse clicking on this one. And um, follow the directions for which animation effect for which part. And then I clicked again, you didn't see me, but it really went to a duplicate slide that has all animation removed. Um, and when we just build that into our slides just because if we're actually presenting and we accidentally click one more time, we don't want it to go to a blank screen like that. So that's why I build that extra slide in there with no animation because you know you accidentally clicked and went to one too many. But because you've set it up this way, you're protected because the audience still sees this slide and they don't know that you've actually went one more slide too many. Okay, so that's just a, a video of how each slide should do. You've got the Lakati PowerPoint answer key already in Moodle. You can click look at all the mechanics of how I have everything set. Um, and then I have the particular videos on particular skills within this. So, um, like there's a great room video that I have linked, the link already in there, so that you can see exactly step by step how to do the great room slide. Okay? And since it's a stacking slide, it works like all the other stacking slides do. So, you use that same video to teach yourself how to do that. And that takes practice. You don't just do this, you know, in one setting. You have to, you know, practice it, remember it, practice it some more, get it firmly built into your head. All right? So, um, let me end it there, and I hope this one helps.